Happy Women's Day, Kim. Isn't it great that we can like, we have these tools and these techniques that we can just get together like this. I know. It is it is such a great thing that we are doing to celebrate and it's international, right? Yeah. International Women's Day and to have it be global where you and I are on two parts of the world. Two different parts of the world. It's like, what is it here? 9.16 in the morning? And it's 5.16 p.m. here. And Las really, Vegas. we can use this whenever we want. We can we can change this up. And, I mean, that's the joy of the world that we live in now. And I think that there's so many people, especially women, that sort of know that you can do this, but they think that it's hard to do this and that it costs a lot of money. Yeah. No, this is not hard. It doesn't cost a lot. But the beautiful thing is, how long have you and I been talking? Would we say it's three? It's not. I probably it's not, probably not four years. But is it three years? It's probably three years. Mm. It's and a lot easily, of it, hasn't it? Oh my gosh, it has been such a beautiful journey with you, and one that I am profoundly grateful for. Um, to have two women like us who are moms, who are business women, who are just women. And we have connected. We've never physically been in a room together, but I love you like a sister. Isn't it amazing how we can do that? And I feel the same. And I feel the same because sometimes I feel like it's, I'm not alone. I feel that um, it can be lonely running a business like this. Yes, very much so. And not, I think that some people think that, um, you know, how do you reach out to somebody that you did feel as if you had a bit of a connection with, whether it's online or offline, you don't want to intrude, you don't want to be too, you know, you just don't want to get into their space. Um, Lots of people are busy. Yes, like for some reason, we just kept it going. And there were so many things in this last few years that we were doing similar things. Yes. We in- and we were having these aha moments in our business with us personally. Um, and coming, having, you know, I've watched you kind of go through it and kind of holding that space for you. And then all of a sudden it shifted and I was going through it and it was such a beautiful marriage of energy of women of space that just trans it transcends time it transcends you know distance um you have impacted my life in so many beautiful ways that i wouldn't be the person i am without you well i think it's the same i feel the same And I think it's because we have found each other and there's no comparing, there's no competition, there's no up each other. No. There's no, this, it's a conversation and share. (laughs) I love that you just said that, that it's a conversation because that's what it is. And then we both take away. And for me, I love it after a conversation that I have had with you and I go, oh, she said this and she said that, and I really relate to that. I feel as if I have somebody else on the same page as me. Yeah, and that is probably more rare and a gift than we realize because we took the opportunity to do it yeah. and, to, and to continue to do it. And there was times that <clears throat> schedules didn't work, There was times that we were kind of off maybe a little bit, but at the same time, you were like, it's okay, I got you. And it never felt like, it's not so hard to explain sometimes. I think for me, it's like, I don't have a lot of expectations any longer. Oh, beautiful. I think that that comes with age and experience. And whatever happens is whatever happens. And there's nothing I can do about it. You know, I'm, we may yeah. have planned something. We may have spoken about, you know, catching up. or And even for this particular 
sort of interview conversation that we wanted to have for International Women's Day. It was like we were both away and then you were away and then you extended the days. It's like, well, does it matter? Yeah. It, it, to me, it really did not matter. And, and I appreciate that because this year has been a year like no other for me as a, as a woman, as a, a wife. <clears throat> Being able to have those conversations with you where the, the insecurity, the doubts, and our conversations and come walking away, just like you said, oh my gosh, someone else gets that. They, they experienced that. And I was in a, <clears throat> excuse me, a women's meeting, um, little, little fireside that we had a uh, week before I left. And there was probably 30 women in the room. And each one kind of got to stand up and talk and kind of share their heart. And it was beautiful because we, women, there was ages, you know, in their early twenties to people in their sixties. And it was a span of time, but having people share that they understood that they're not alone, that there was somebody going through it, through it. Sometimes I think we get into those little, those holes where we think we're the only ones. Sorry, I'm getting messages from a girlfriend. A girlfriend, actually, that again has come into my life that I love, and she lives here in Perth. Oh. And at times I go, oh, my God, I just want to see Linda. I just want to be in her space. And that's what I have found with you. Yeah, and I'm yeah. sure the same with those women in that group that you've just been speaking of. And I'm sorry to interrupt that, but you probably heard the ting. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I now know that when I get that, when I'm in that space where I just want to see her, I just call her up now and go, what are you doing this afternoon? Can we go for a walk? Wow. And everything just goes for an hour, an hour and a half. And we just chat. Yeah. And look what we just discovered that we should have known all along with WhatsApp. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yesterday we had like a video chat, right? Just on the phone. I got to show you the beach where I was at. And we get to text like in real time. Yeah, we messenger and stuff. We were doing that before, but excuse me, my little allergies right now <laughs> but um to me that was I was like a little giddy school girl when we did that I was like man why have we not done that yet so it was the right time yeah yeah it was funny actually because I put a post on Facebook to somebody that I hadn't seen for oh I want actually it's eight years and oh. it's a young and I was very good friends with his father and his father died eight years ago. And I happened to put a post on there saying, your dad would be so proud of you now. And I woke up this morning, he's in um, the US, and I woke up this morning and he had done a great big long post to me, thanking me, how appreciative I was, how somebody was thoughtful enough to think of reaching out to one of, you know, his dad's friends, kids to just touch base. And I often just yeah. say hi or great work or, but for some reason this touched him. And so we're WhatsApping over the weekend and we'll just have a catch up. Now I don't really know him really well. I knew his dad really well, but it's yeah. like, I think it's these connections. We don't, we, we sometimes just take for granted. And sometimes we don't want to go into them in the fear that we're going to be rejected. Somebody's going to say something that we don't like that it's not the right time, that sometimes we just have to be able to have the courage to put that post out and be yeah. really with it. Because people do know when we're genuine and not just posting for the sake of posting or we are yeah. calling because we're genuine and we need something as well for us to acknowledge that we need something as well. And I, you know, I'm looking forward to our chat because it, it would be like speaking to his dad. Oh, my goodness, yes. And that's, yeah, I, there's people in my life that all of a sudden have come 
you know, like full circle, I haven't talked to them in a while and they come back. And that's the beauty of having those true authentic connections that are meaningful because then you can have that. It's like no time has passed. Mm. Mm. And you can't judge them. You can't judge them. You can't predict them. You can't expect anything from them. And this is what I've learned. It's like, it will, it will come. It will come if it's meant to be. And I know that that sounds like really airy fairy, but it's like, <laughs> it's the truth. It just happens. It is. And it's about us. It's about my personal development, my attitude, my space that I keep for myself that, you know, encourages mm -hmm. those connections. Being more connected to myself has encourages connections with other people more naturally. Yeah, exactly. And I, I look at, <clears throat> I put a post um, for Women's Day and that morning, this morning I had put in all of these women that I started putting together that I, that have impacted me because I didn't want to leave anybody out. And it got to be kind of overwhelming because I honestly realized for the first time and got a little emotional that there were so many women in my life now, because there was a time in my life that there weren't. And the profound gratitude, the change and shifting that I'm seeing where women are embracing each other, they're supporting one another, um, I think has grown exponentially, at least in my lifetime. Yes, me too. And I think in the last three years, COVID has really, it's allowed people, generally it's allowed people to have more time for themselves and to do some development and to, to actually have time to look at some of their attitudes and their beliefs. Mm -hmm. I think that in turn has allowed, especially women, but not only women, mm -hmm. that ability to be, what's the right word? Is there a word for it? I don't know, to be more open, to be more connected, to be more able to be themselves. Maybe that's what it is. You know, it's, I have a, some I'm programs and ideas that I'm, I'm working on. And it really comes back to living to be themselves. And I'm hearing more and more of that. Um, I think we see so many images out there of what we should be or what and we're expected to be. <clears throat> and you just need to be yourself. That's okay. That's enough. And it really is the comparison. You said that earlier, and that hit me really hard because even though I'm conscious of that, there's times that I compare oh my gosh, I'm not doing what that person's doing, or I could be doing it, you know, better. Why am I not? And uh, having daughters, you have daughters, I have daughters. Um, they have taught me more about how I even talk to myself or how I view myself because they're like, hey, what you're saying is impacting me. And it starts at home. It starts with ourselves, but that it extends home. I can't agree more. My, my two daughters have taught me, I feel like everything I know. When I look back and compare myself to when I was, and I use this example in my presentations, when I was standing in my kitchen with my newborn baby, with my five-year-old standing next to me going, I, c I don't think I can do this because I haven't grown up yet. I don't think that I can bring these two amazing people that has just happened. You know, I didn't plan it. I Yes, it was expected to have a family in those days and it was expected to, that you would be a wife, but I had three at that time and how was I going to do that I had no clue and that's when I started that's when I jumped into personal development I I love that you said that because you might see me get a little teary because um I was very a very young mom and I 
I've had some very, uh, today I had an old video show up on my husband's phone. We don't know where it came from. It was our little, our oldest ones when they were like five years old running around the house on Christmas. And then thinking about where I just had my son um, has now entered the Marine Corps and the U.S. Marines and watching that whole growth go through and each one of my children as you see those challenges and the growth go and my husband last night at dinner and I said he mentioned something that I did and I said yeah that would have been different you know 20 years ago or 10 years ago and he goes you're right he goes you've changed quite a bit and to hear that from either my children or my husband or those closest to me the growth um, like you said, when I was a young mom, I didn't know how I was going to do it. Oh, I definitely thought I couldn't do it. I was beside myself. I remember it as clear as day. And I don't remember things so much in the past. I'm a very live in the moment person, which is great sometimes and not so great at other times. No, that's why you and I are so much alike <laughs> because I, I have people, I have friends that I grew up with and my husband, my children, do you remember when this happened? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. You know, my kids say to me, oh, I remember us dancing around the lounge room. Didn't don't you remember that, mum? And you're always singing and you're always dancing and we're always playing this music. And I go, I don't remember that because I'm, I'm doing it with my grandkids now. I have two grand, grand baby boys yeah. and I'm always singing with them. And we're always getting out a musical instrument. And it's like, I've, I, I, it's just, this is where I am now. And so I don't remember those things. So it's great when you get, I love it that your husband gave you that confirmation. I think that's so empowering for your relationship. Because that's you and I have been married, married for a long time. Yeah. Now, how long have you been married again? I can't remember. I think this year it's going to be 46 years. Oh, wow. I was married as a baby. I was married when I was 19. So was I. <laughs> It'll be 47 this year in August. Yeah, it's a long time, isn't it? It is. I had a, when we were checking into the hotel, it was a young woman. And she said, can I ask you a question? Because I had to go back and get something. And I said, she goes, it's personal. And I said, sure. And she was like, how long have you been married? And I said, you know, 37 years this year. And she, she's known me. I've come and frequented this place. And she goes, I just was watching you and your husband. And you are so youthful. And you are so cute. And how you act together. And she goes, I just, I want that. And I said, how long have you been married? And she goes, a year and a half. And I just said, you've got time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think these little examples and these stories really do show that we're all the same mm -hmm. around the world. We are all the same. We yeah. want someone to love. We want someone to love us. And we want to be able to build a family. And to build a family, I think it does take money and time and connection and personal development. It does. And that, that's a lot of juggling. It is. And it can feel very daunting and very overwhelming. I really didn't start my personal development until about 15, 16 years ago. I didn't even know it existed. It was me literally just trying to survive. And because of that feeling, um, I went searching for it and experienced all the the mocking and the teasing and I ended up having because you when you start that journey I don't know if it was like that for this for you but when I started that personal development journey it was like I had found the holy grail and I wanted to share it with everybody I wanted everybody to feel like I did but not everybody does and it's a little scary for those people who start seeing those changes because they don't know what that's going to look like and it doesn't know, they don't know how it's going to affect them. Mm -hmm. it's, fierce. it's very fearful. 
It is. And so there was times that I didn't have the courage or the strength or the, the women in my life that were going through that, or at least I didn't think they were. And so I would pull back and stop, but that hunger and that knowing what it made me feel, I had to do it kind of quietly. But isn't it fascinating? We're talking about this growth in attitude and it's been going on for, you know, 150 years or so. And some people joined it 150 years ago and some people joined it one day ago. And it's like, I know that people have said to me, you know, you're, you're not, you're not your high energy self today. What's going on? And I'll go, oh, well, you know, there's something happening with one of my children or I've had a really busy day. I feel like, or I feel like I've got computer eyes today. I've been working with spreadsheets all day and I feel as if, you know, maybe I'm a bit overwhelmed in things, whatever the situation is. But the thing that has really sunk into my body is that people recognize my energy (laughs) and I attribute my energy to the growth that I have put into myself. Yes. The watering, the feeding, the continual looking for people that I can, you know, add to and that they can add to me. Yes. It's a two-way thing. Oh, yeah. So let me ask you a question because I, there's going to be people that watch this. What is some of the things when people see that energy come down? Because we can't all be up, right, all the time. It's not so possible. It's not. And I have, and I, I have some friends and some family that I've had to remind that of. They have, re- they're in these relationships, and they're like, "Well, they're this or they're that." And I'm like, "It's time you allow that. It's okay yeah. for them to be that." Yeah. And what are some things you do to rejuvenate that? Well, I think this is a good question for both of us. Mm-hmm. Because, and people have asked me for years and have said, gee, you should write a book. And, I've, and yes, I have written several books and I have written a bestseller. But I really haven't addressed the, the things that I do that's a core for me. And my yoga, Tai Chi, has been with me for, well, I did it when my first baby. So, and my first baby is now 43. So that, that was the beginning of moving my body. And now I have a routine that if I don't do that you know, for maybe three or four days, I feel as if I don't have my blood running through my system. I agree. So that is one key point. And the other, the other thing that I have been doing for years and years is I've always found some type of music that I can lull off to and let my thoughts float through the top of my head. That's how I visualize it. Oh, wow. And that not, not to let myself be trapped. So a type of meditation. I, I spoke to this group for just a few minutes before we, the other night, and they asked me to go uh, to lead a meditation, which I'd never done before. And you, so for several years until this last, this last year, and, and, and you and I having our conversations, I had really had in my mind that meditation was just the, Mm. In, you know, that type of thing. And I could not ever get into my body. But over the course of this last year, year to year and a half, I've discovered that I do all kinds of meditations and it looks different for me. I mean, sometimes I love, I found Qigong, which is very similar to Tai Chi. Love that. Um, get moving my body. Um, Sometimes I, it sounds really weird, but I meditate in my car when I'm driving. I like driving long distance. And sometimes I have things come to me when I'm driving. It it sounds strange, but that's part of it. Yeah. Music. There's just so many ways now that I'm like, okay, meditation takes on many different forms for us. And when I let go of the expectation, I love that you use that, (laughs) that we started this, because once I let go of that expectation of what it's supposed to look like, 
get changed. Yeah. And feel yeah. like for me, it's like, you know, the feelings. Mm-hmm. I know that I am in my body when my gut is clear. And that's on a physical level and a metaphysical level. Yes. And the other thing that you and I are similar on is nature. Yeah. When I get into nature, oh, it's my that is my happy place. Yes. Well, you saw my photo the other day that I put up. <laughs> Isn't it adorable? It is. Oh my gosh. And And I told you in there, in your comments, I'm like, I saw that picture. It spoke to my heart because I, I call that picture Dying Kim. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two, those two little precious, what are, are they owls? They're tawny, they're a type of owl. They're a tawny frog mouth. Yes. Yeah. Gorgeous. Oh, and I've been gorgeous. following them for two weeks. So I have a lot of photos of them. And that particular morning was the first morning that they'd moved away from their mum and dad. Because what these birds do is they fly around at night, of course, and get their food. Right. And this was the first morning that they had both set and sat in a tree and different. Their mum and dad was up higher and the little babies were below. And they kept on looking up at their mum and dad and going, is somebody photographing me? You know, they're getting to this. And then eventually the, the, the mum or the dad, I don't know, don't know, the, don't know them well enough, came and sat next to the little babies. Oh, they get away from my babies now. It's time. It was it was a really beautiful like moment because it was the first morning that that actually sat apart. Oh, because I wow. them in the nest. And then I was finding them every morning for about a week to ten days. Spend ten minutes, fifteen minutes, like looking around because they just look like a trunk of a tree. Oh. And then this particular morning, there was two two lots. Go, oh, no. this is very different. Yeah. It was really a special, special time. But, yeah, those little tawny frog mouths are very adorable. They, and you have such a beautiful gift of photography. There's, it's, so, it's so fun because we're so multifaceted humans, right? And there's so much to us where we are you and I are not defined by one thing. I mean, there's so many things out. Tell people a little bit about what kind of a little bit about your journey. I know I'm, I, that's just who I am. <laughs> I like asking questions because <laughs> they need to know I'm going to put links in the, to your little, your cards and stuff like that. Um, but so what is it? Well, you know, I go, ah, do I really need to share myself? There's that like, and I don't think Australia, this is just for Australia, that tall poppy syndrome is so huge and it's been in for generations that, you know, we don't big note ourselves. We share, but we don't share, we share minimally. And so for me, I find this difficult because, you know, I'm just I'm just a normal human being doing doing the best that I can. And at times I don't do so well. And at other times I feel like I do really well. So and if I- we were to minimize it, <laughs> I think I would say, so let me let me say what I think. So you have been a leader among women. You've had talk shows, you have been a speaker, like you said, best-selling author. You are a photographer. Um, you're an amazing grandmother, an amazing mom. You have a successful business with your husband. Um, so I'll say it for you. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah. I think I could, you know, like I think you, I don't think I'm the only one that has this hardship in saying what we have done and what our um no what, it's, it's it's a common thing i think especially among women it is very much so i'll have a go at you i'll have a go at you because you <laughs> have children i have two you have six children i mean my god you must have been sleep deprived for how many years 15 years or something sleep deprived yeah. You know, that's the minimum. 
Yeah. And then still running a businesses, still being a mum. Now you're a grandma. It's like that wealth of experience. I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about this yesterday when I was driving. Something must happen. I'd love to do some research. I wonder if somebody has done, done some research. I'm wondering actually... You know, when you have it, you're about to have a baby, you know that all your bones and muscles and ligaments and tendons, they're all going to stretch and change and allow this baby to just like come out. Yes. Something like that must happen to our brains when we have these babies to be able to figure out that we have to do more than one thing at a time. Yes. And then the overwhelm happens and it changes and it molds and you know, beliefs get thrown out the door and new things happen because we have this screaming child. Then sometimes we have two, sometimes we have three, sometimes we have four. It's like things happen that it's like we actually have to make the change. We don't have any choice. No, you don't. And, you know, people have often said, you know, how how do you do it? And I'm like, you just find a way. There was a period of my life where I had a kindergartner through a senior. I was a full-time substitute teacher. I was running a business and my husband traveled for work. You know, my, how do you do that? You, well, you, my children <laughs> had to step up too. Yes. And my older boys, they often have said, we've probably changed more diapers than most men. Mm -hmm. And I and I and they're, and they're great kids. Are any of us perfect? No, but I'm I'm really proud of the humans that they are. They're extraordinary. And isn't that wonderful to be able to see when your kids have grown up and they've chosen their partners or haven't chosen their partners, whichever path they like to go on, have their children, they're bringing up their children. We go. I think that's the time for me that I really realized. I actually did an okay job. Yes, I wasn't perfect. I'm oh, still, no. I still screw up. I still say the wrong thing. The words come out of my mouth before I even yes. think. Of it. And I go, yes. oh, I did it again. And, but now I'm able to go, well, actually, I mean. Yeah. And it changes the whole. You know, my energy has totally changed. And I hope that I continue to grow with that. You will. Because, you know, oh, yes, I definitely will because I know that it has changed the relationship that I have with my kids and my husband and my friends. Yes, all of it, right? All of it. And I don't think there's enough emphasis put on that with women, that if only we could take that time for ourselves and put those rituals into our life, into our days, learn what works for us. And I think too, not only we don't give ourselves, if, if we fail or we do it wrong one time, then we say we can't do it anymore. And I, I kind of go back when I've talked to clients and, and women, I, I was like, I was a concert pianist at one point in my life. And I practiced two hours in the morning, two to three hours after school, did my homework, and I had to practice. And I would practice and practice. And whether it's, you call it ritual or you call it practice, you have to practice to be good at something. And you have to give yourself that loving grace that it's okay to make the mistakes so you, so you can keep improving. But I think for me, the key was to decide, okay, when I come into this situation or something similar, this is how I want to respond. And sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't. Sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't. And I think the other thing that I have found, especially the last, oh, I'm over 60 now. So when I, about when I turned 60, and I have to say that this is, has been and is the best time of my life. It is amazing my life is amazing and at times I have to pinch myself that I'm living this life and one of the things that has really made a huge difference and I've always taken care of my diet is to really focus on the alkalinity in my diet 
to keep my gut as clean as I possibly can. And so I know that um, because I believe now that my my gut health really does affect my foggy brain, my clarity, my memory, my ability to think on my feet, think out of the box. And no, then it's I agree. rituals that help me to put all that together. But it's what I put in my mouth and prepare to put in my mouth that actually helps me to keep my brain clear so that I actually have a choice as to what are my beliefs? What am I thinking? Where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. And there's so much study now to know that, you know, the more alkaline we can eat, the better our thinking is going to be. That gives us more choice. I think life is about choices. It, it is completely about choices. So how do these women who are like, I'm working, I have my kids, I just don't have time. How do we help this generation coming up where they're being pulled in, women being pulled in so many different directions? They're like, I can't do it all at once. How, how would you suggest, because you're a lot even better than I am. So how would you suggest the baby steps? You know, I don't think it's all, I don't think it's just for women that are being pulled in all different directions with their kids, their business, their work, juggling themselves, growing up all at the same time, managing a relationship, helping that person to grow up at times. I think it's everyone. <laughs> I love that you said that. <laughs> because I think, it, I think it is everybody because I think women my age and even older are still being pulled by expectations family expectations their expectations social expectations and then there's this whole level that we're not good enough because we have a 40 year old generation and we're 60 and 70s that they're like going gung-ho they're the top of their rung now they're not backward in telling us that we don't know or that they know better and I think that it's not so it's not only the 20 30 40 year olds that are being pulled in all different directions don't have a minute to give to themselves and trying to squeeze in a gym or squeeze in a you know to learn meditation i remember that you know i've been there i've done that and i know that the world has changed but i think it's also those older people that really are feeling a little redundant and not as confident as they used to be no, i actually that's a really good point yeah, I remember my, my uh, mother-in-law saying when she was about this age, actually, I think she's about 55, and she said, I feel as if my confidence is waning. And I wow. I was 30. Did I know what she was talking about? Had no clue, but I remember it really well now. Wow. I mean, my confidence was up there. I had three businesses. I had little children. You know, we had a lot of friends. We were traveling a lot. I was on the top of my game. And now I have more time. I have more time to think about myself and where I want to go and have fantastic people like you in my life. I didn't have that time before. Right. Same. I think we're talking to a very long length of time when we, when we say we're talking for 20-year-olds right through to late 70s, 80s. I agree. I agree. And yes, there's many things that shift along that timeline. But I really do think that people are generally struggling to be able to have that. You know, it's a cliche, isn't it? You know, that we say, oh, you, you need to have your voice. I don't think we need to have our voice. I think we need to have our quiet confidence back. That's then a really beautiful and very profound that's where I'm at I just you know we can be we have our quiet confidence back we can be who we want to be and who we really are yeah most people don't know they've been so busy yeah and they're still so busy and they justify that they're busy <laughs> It takes time to build these, this sort of relationship like what you and I have. It, and takes, it, time. Takes, it takes time and trust. And, yep. Yep. 
and juggling. We're all very good at juggling. We are. We definitely are. I want you to tell people about, sorry, I want you to tell people about your um, little side business right now because we both have started new businesses this year. Yeah. And I can you explain what you are developing? I'd love to hear it. So Restful Life, I have been doing um, just crystal, you know, real stone bracelets. It's kind of my love language for 13 years. I would just make them for friends and family and just give them as gifts or if I felt somebody needed something. And <clears throat> when my brother and I sold our business, I was like, my husband was like, why don't you, he goes, I watch you make these bracelets for people and they light up like a Christmas tree. And he says, see if you can start doing a business. And I said, you know, this is going to take a long time. <laughs> And he goes, yeah, but, you know, at least it's something you can start working on. And I was really wanting to, I feel that everyone deserves a life that is beautiful, meaningful, and full of gratitude. And the bracelets are beautiful. They have meaning. The stones have meanings of, you know, what they mean. And I think that if you incorporate gratitude in your life that's where the magic happens and so I have started this there's little pieces that's of personal development in it there's affirmation cards there's all these it's more of an experience and that's what I want anything that I do it to be an experience because that's where we gain wisdom and that's where we can integrate it into our lives so Riskful Life is that. It's a, an experience. Um, I've started back my Coffee with Kim podcast. Um, <clears throat> I kind of shut everything down for about seven, eight months, you know, as, and as well as you know. And it was time for me to kind of take a, I was writing in my book for my book on in the car ride today. And in the, the entertainment industry that my daughter was in for many years, they take a hiatus. And so I now look at that time period as a hiatus. For so many years, I didn't take a break. I didn't step back, look at what was important to me. What do I want to, this next uh, season or part of my life, do I want to give back to the world? And so that's kind of what I'm uh, working on now is taking all those personal development pieces, the things that will help women or, or men um, to wear bracelets, that this was my transformational mechanism. This is what helped me have that quiet confidence that you're talking about to work on things that nobody else knew what I was working on. Beautiful. So, Beautiful. I know it's a long explanation. I need to tailor it down smaller but mm -hmm. that's what I'm working on beautiful I just love it that um two 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 facets to that I love it that your husband encouraged you because mm -hmm. I know my husband encourages me and I think it's so important so and like important. really encourage not just say encourage or silence encourage. That's not encouraging. That's not supporting. Yeah. Really. yeah. With my photography, my husband will get in the car and he'll drive me. I Aww. mean, really. I mean, that's amazing. And yes, there is something for it in it for him. He loves to drive. He loves being out and, out and about. You know, we go camping. So there is something in there for him he has a camera if he wants to use it most of the time he doesn't I think it's more like a etiquette thing for him <laughs> but he still he, he participates in it and that's I find that that's encouraging it wouldn't be so much fun if I would be out there doing that on my own yeah very much so yeah and you know that's what happened this week for me my husband he knew I was sad about my son leaving and he's just uh he was like let's just stop 
because it was near the ocean. He was like, it was my favorite little town was about 20 minutes away. And he's like, out of the blue, we were, we dropped our son, my, our son off. And he was like, how about we, you call up your friend and let's stay in the little, little hotel. <clears throat> and then he got, we got there. He's like, let's stay two nights. Yeah. And it's like, how beautiful that we're in a position to be able to do that. Yeah. And I think, you know, people people look at Robert and I, and I'm sure they look at you and your husband as well, and they go, well, she's lucky. And I, people, I've said that. People have said that to me. And I go, it's not luck. This has taken time, and it's taken both of us to get out of our own way for us to have a relationship like this. And it's not perfect. We're not perfect. No. It's far from it. I could have left many, many, many times. I'm sure he could have left. I would not, I'm not an easy person to live with. Yeah. We've said the same thing. Yeah. To each other. Yeah. But he's so the we choice. Often, yes. We, and it's when we often want to turn around and point the finger at somebody else for the situation that we are in. And I think that if that's one thing that I quite bluntly at times say to women is like, you're in that situation, but why are you in that situation? We started with nothing. Oh. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys started with nothing. How did that happen? We yeah. kept feeding, watering, persevering, you know, trying to have conversations, trying to get out so that people could, you know, come into our life that was more, that were more, there was a whole, it's a whole recipe. It is. I, and it takes two to tango. It does. It does. And I, I said something to him when we were out the last couple of days. I, I said to him, I said, it's really interesting. I look back, you know, at 19 and 20 and I, we, we were babies and we really, we only knew each other six months before we got married. And I told him, I said, I want to apologize if I haven't already apologized because I was always pointing the finger to him and saying, you need to change this. You need to change that. Right. And it wasn't until many years later that I started looking at myself. and like, I'm the one that needs to change. Yeah. Yeah. You can't change people. It's like, what do I need to do? How do I need to step out of my own way? And that's hard to know how and what to do for that. Yeah, but I think it is, I think, yes, people say, well, what do I meant to do? Well, if we listen, people actually normally tell us. Yeah. Yes. And they tell us with lots and lots of different ways. They don't just tell us verbally. They tell us because do they come over for a cup of coffee? Do they invite you to the movies? Do they give you compliments? Mm -hmm. Do they tell you the truth? Are they walking on eggshells? There's a lot of ways that people tell us what our energy is doing because we can't really see it. We're inside. We can't see outside of ourselves. We have to take those outside cues. But most people don't want to because they're so absorbed in their beliefs and their thoughts of where they have been in the past or what's just happened five seconds ago or what's happening right now or their whole self um, you know, disbelief about themselves that they're not good enough and they're not really listening to the conversation anyway, they're actually somewhere else. Very much. And so. I think that's the biggest thing for me that I have had to learn to be, and I am a present person, but how can I be truly, truly present now? Yeah. <clears throat> One of the things she has also taught me that I think is a beautiful thing is sometimes when you and I are having conversations, there's space in between. Sometimes we sit there for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, and just hold that space. It doesn't have to be constantly filled with, with words. And, and that is one of the beautiful things that I've learned from you. Yeah, I learned that a long time ago. And then other times we're like, so, <laughs> which is so female. It is. So female. And I love that. 
I and think too. Changes and the synapses go off. And then it's like, oh, okay. And I think that right there, that okay right there is what makes a relationship. Because often relationships go with all the time. So there's that comparing and that competition and we're doing this and we're doing that and it's busy and the justification and the expectations jump in and all this is happening and then they leave. Yeah. That was great. That was a great cup of coffee or a great movie. I had a really good time. But where were we in that? Mm -hmm. I love that you just said that because there have been times that I've been with people that not once did they ask about me. And that's okay. There's times that that's needed. Um, but those don't typically last the distance. Mm-hmm. There, I, I think it's got to be that give and take in a relationship and not one side. Yeah. One of the things that I've heard to be quite current right now, and I've heard it a couple of times this last couple of weeks, I don't hear it a lot, but I have heard it a couple of times, is that, oh, one example was, oh, my friend is now living on the east coast of Australia and she's doing so well. She got rid of all her toxic situations. She got rid of all her toxic friends and now she's living away and she's not in contact with her mum anymore and she's not you know, talking to her sister that was so toxic. And I go, Huh? She just she just ran away. <laughs> She's gonna find another toxic person somewhere else because she's probably toxic. Interesting. Yeah. So another example of pointing the finger out and not looking back to go, what's my part in this? Yeah. And yes, I'm sure, you know, there are, there's lots of people that you want to have a distance from, but we are all one. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a couple of people in my life that I tolerate and I go, hmm, why do I tolerate that? And yes, it is really happening. Mm-hmm. But at times I obviously do it because it bugs me. <laughs> Otherwise it wouldn't bug me. Just wouldn't. Yeah. And sometimes I wonder when I've been in those situations, if it's a mirror. Absolutely, it's a mirror. I don't wonder. I know it's a mirror. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Isn't it great that we can have these conversations? Yes. I went to drop off my dog this morning to have a groom and see, great life. Able to go groom my little, you know, poodle. <laughs> I ha- we have to get ours groomed because I sure can't do it. <laughs> exactly. But I was thinking I want to have a real conversation with Kim today because sometimes I know that I get, a, I get nervous. And when I get nervous, I tend to want to talk more abstract and I tend to want to talk more in my head and not really settle in my body and just let the conversation happen. And I was talking to myself on the way there and on the way back and going, just chill, just, you know, have a bit of a plan. We had a bit of a plan. We have a bit of a plan. Maybe it's gone to the plan. I haven't looked. But that's really what we've been talking about today. And I'm really proud of myself that I feel as if I've been able to share really where I am right now. And it will change tomorrow. It will change in five seconds. Yes. But I think it works with us because whenever we do anything, and especially like this, is from our hearts and that's where the intention is is that we are as we've said we're grateful for where we are in our life or the history and experiences that we've had that have brought us to where we are now 
and to be able to share that with others to see what is possible. And I think that in itself is where the beauty lies. And the trust, yeah. And the trust. Mm. And that is beautiful. When I've done my my shows in the past, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I need a, a thing of questions. I need all this. And I'm like, you know what? The best interviews I've had are like this. It's a conversation. It's, I, I, and I, there's people that I've told, no, I, I, it's not a good fit for the show. And that's okay. Um, because I really, if people come from the heart, they really have passion and love for who they are and what they're doing and what they're bringing to the world. I think it just comes. Hmm. And you've always, I mean, we've had these conversations before and they're just, they're so beautiful. And easy. Easy. That's a good one. Easy. I like stuff being easy now. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays I don't want to rush and I don't need to have things hard. And I was brought up that you had to be on time and you had to fit everything in before you got and you had to wash yourself outside out the door so your house was perfect. So and then, you know, have everything prepared. It's gone out the window. Yes, I don't have small children now, but I'm often getting grandchildren ready for things. Mm -hmm. And my whole way of doing stuff being has changed i wish i had known that when i was 20 30 40 50 right God, I wish and i wish i could transfer that to millions of people yes that's taking on my body yep that's kind of where I, that's kind of what i was talking about before <clears throat> it's still evolving but i think what the work you and i and where our heart and intention is, is how do we help the generations coming to have the tools? Yes, they have to experience it, right? My daughter's keeping my knee. Mom, I have to make my own mistakes. I have to do this. But I had zero tools. All I had was survival. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hope to be able to transfer to my children and to others that that are wanting that, needing that. And I think the other thing is it does take money to have beautiful stuff in your life and beautiful people and time. It does. You've got to be able to have money and, and give good value so you are fulfilled in exchange for money so that you can have time to develop more and share more. It, that's just how our world works it is and it's interesting a person recently told me that it's an ex an energy exchange we've put this this value or 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 the lack or limitation of the money i think so often that we don't realize it's just an energy exchange mm. What is that value? What is that energy that you want to bring into your life and to give? And the only way you can get that energy is to be able to put that energy into ourselves first. And that is through attitudes, looking at our beliefs, knowing what is a thought from the past and a belief compared to what is my thought compared to what is my mum's or my dad's or my uncle's or my society's or social media's. <laughs> You know, there's so yes. much. No, you've said it beautifully. I think there's several little nuggets of words in here. If people watch it a few times, they're going to get it. We talked about expectations multiple times. We talked about belief multiple times. We've talked about rituals. Rituals. Um, we've talked about global friends 
and the technology that goes with that and how easy and inexpensive that is. And I think how important. Mm -hmm. This guy that I'm going to speak to on the weekend, the son of my friend who died, he says, oh, you know, we're 15 hours behind. Well, that to me is, I already knew that. And so that's easy for me. He says, I'm working today, tomorrow, and then I'll be free on the weekend. And it's like, okay, because I already know the, 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 the time zones. Or if I didn't know his time zone, I would have just gone and looked it up. Yeah. But it's not a barrier. And no. so I think global friends are important these days. It is. Gives us a different it gives us a different look and perspective because there are some differences, but then you also realize that we're not all that different. No. Yeah, I used to say in my Global Women's Voice, the tagline, we are we're the same the world over. Oh, I don't yeah. I didn't remember that. I love yeah. that. Yeah, and people used to say when I first started doing it, and this is now four, five, six years ago, what does that mean? Well, now you see it everywhere. We are the same or the world over. Yeah. We are. We all want the same things. We're human beings. Yeah. We're not human doings. We are human beings. beings. Yeah. Yeah. It would be great if um, when we post these little pieces, whether people read it as the whole chunk, which must be an hour or so, or if they read a little snippet that they go see the big chunk, or they ask us questions from little snippets as to, you know, what does it mean? What are you doing? It would be great to have that feedback from people because people will watch it. But I'd love to be able to feel that we've done a good enough job here of being who we are and holding the space for each other and for them. Yes for them to be able to send us an email or make a post. Yes, I agree. And I believe that even if you go back and look at what was done um, with DJ, I just cut a chunk, two chunks of conversation. And he was like, wow, you picked out two great pieces to, for the commercial. Mm. And he had ended up with seven people at his event and we were and it was just a short period of time it wasn't a long so I think just going back in cutting some really key pieces <clears throat> minute this is done I'll upload it to you um I'll have to probably compress it. I'll have to figure out how to get it to you in its entirety um Stick it in Google Drive. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so you can download it and you can have your person cut it, but I'll probably start working on this tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we probably need to finish this off in some way. We do. Yes. All right. We were, we were talking about what we talked about. We could now talk about, because that can be kept. Mm -hmm. um, go to you know our own personal takeaways which will be similar but you know, I have that's, that's kind of where I was going with it because those I I feel over the the nuggets that I came from this that I want people to to see are the the takeaways and nuggets of you know where are your expectations where are um, you on your beliefs about yourself and about others you know the value of having global friendships and the technology that there doesn't have to be a barrier those and I think oh sorry no no those are that's that's what I that's what were my takeaways today and my takeaways have been the same. And I think it's so we've talked about our own little side businesses this year. We And I already run a, a large event production business. You already run a, biz, a business. And 
we both started these small businesses on the side. Yours, your wrist for life, and mine, I call my cards. You know, I just started to put some of these, like this was one. Oh, so beautiful. I yeah. love your pictures. Yes. And so I have a pack of 10 cards that I have put into local supplies right now, or suppliers, um, retailers. And it's a way of people being able to see how to gel some of their ideas so that they can become independent if they are not. Or no. just make a little bit of pocket money on the side. It's and that's the side hustle. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it is. It is a side hustle, but it's also a big contributor to having us more fulfilled and it giving is. us quiet confidence. That's the other piece is that quiet confidence. It's a new world out there. It's a new world in here. It is. So happy Women's Day. Happy Women's Day. I'm so grateful for you. I'm hoping that we celebrate it every single day of the year by being kind to each other and supporting each other and really helping each other get to do and be who we really want to be. Very much so. Beautiful way to end it. Thank you very much for your time, Kim. Thank you.